Oh, it's good to be at the 508. You guys can take a seat. It is an absolute honor to be here tonight. I love Pastor Devin, Natalia, the, the entire 508 team. Love this church. Love what, what God is doing uh, in this city, in this state. Uh, huge welcome if you are tuning in online. Um, but I'm, I'm just excited to be here. I mean, if, if there is anyone in here and, and like you are like a, an atheist, can I just tell you, it's the middle of summer and there's a few hundred young adults on a Friday night. Uh, and I don't even know where we are, but this is amazing. And uh, I love your faith, uh, love this team, uh, love being able to share the word uh, for a moment. Um, can I can I do this? I become that like really annoying dad who like shows photos of my kids. Uh, can, can we can we put that that photo up there? Um, this is my my kids right here. This is Archie Brooklyn, uh, little guy right there. He's four months old right now, and, and this is Lila Rose, uh, my five year old daughter. She thinks she's fifteen. Uh, she's five. She's very sweet, but she's extremely sassy. And so please pray for her. Um, but uh, I'm excited. If you have a Bible with you, I want you to go with me to uh, John chapter six. I know we've got some of our our team here from Hillsong Boston. Thank you for being here supporting tonight. Uh, John chapter 6. We're going to get into this. Is that all right? Can can we just get to the Word? I mean, I I really believe that God wants to say something. I really believe that God wants to encourage every single one of us tonight. And uh, John chapter 6 is the third longest chapter in the entire Bible. And for good reason, there's a whole lot that happens in John chapter 6. I mean, Jesus, he feeds the, the 5,000, which, which is more like 15, 20,000 people with a few loaves and, and a few fish. And this miracle has such an impact on the crowd that, that they want to make Jesus like, like king, like right then and there. And so Jesus, he, 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 he slips off uh, into the crowd. He goes one way, and his disciples, they get in a boat and go another way. And so what does Jesus do when his ride uh, leaves him? He, he walks on water just to, to catch up. That's, that's what Jesus does. And the next morning, the crowd come looking for Jesus because they're, they're hungry. Um, they, they want some more bread. They, they want this, this miracle to happen again. But, but Jesus knows that it was more than physical hunger. Jesus knows that there was a spiritual hunger. You see, there is a spiritual hunger on the inside of of every single one of us. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3.11 that God has placed eternity in our hearts. There is a longing on the inside of every single one of us. And Jesus knew this. And so Jesus welcomed the crowd and he starts talking to them. And he he declares that he's in fact the satisfaction to this, this spiritual hunger. He says in in verse 35, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And then they have this conversation about bread. It gets a little bit weird. And, And by the end of their conversation, a whole bunch of his disciples, a whole bunch of the crowd that were following Jesus end up walking away from him. Pick it up in verse 66. It says, from this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You don't want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the 12. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We've come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. If you want a title tonight, if you are uh, taking notes, if you're extra spiritual this evening and you're taking some notes, uh, the title uh, is, it's complicated, all right? It's it's complicated. Can you just look at someone and say, look, it's it's complicated. You don't even know. You don't even know. It's it's complicated. Um, Hey, I want to pray and then we're going to dive right in. Jesus, I thank you for the privilege and honor it is to be here tonight. God, I pray that you would help me to clearly communicate and articulate this message, that, God, you would bring it to life in our hearts. God, I pray that you would speak to us. God, I pray that you would do something powerful in these next few moments. In Jesus' name, if you believe it, can you say amen? Amen. And if you love Jesus, can we put our hands together? Can we make some noise once more on a Friday night at the 508? Come on. Look, can we, just, can we just establish something this evening? Uh, can we just agree on something? Life is complicated, all right? Can we just, like, I'm just, life is complicated. Like, take friendships, for example, 
any, anyone, you got that complicated friend. Like, you love them, but they just complicate everything. Complicated friend. I, I've got a few complicated friends. I remember a couple years ago, uh, we were going to a Kevin Hart uh, comedy show at Madison Square Garden, and I had a, my, my complicated friend, he was meeting us at the front entrance, and we're waiting for him, and, and he shows up, and he's got this, this duffel bag, like this heavy duffel bag with him. We're like, like, bro, what's in the back? He's like, I went deep sea fishing today. I'm like, deep sea fishing? Like, what have you got in that bag? He's like, man, you wouldn't believe it. I, I caught a shark. I'm like, bro, you've got a shark in the bag? He's like, yeah, we, we cut it up. I got, I got a shark in the bag. I'm like, man, we're at Madison Square. This is New York City. Like, if you see something, say something. Like, like you seem very suspicious right now. Like, they're not going to let you in with the shark. He's like, no, it's going to be fine. And so we, we go up through security, and he puts his bag on the table, and this, this poor security guard unzips this duffel bag, and there's a, a shark and fish guts just right there. And he, he kind of looks up at my friend, looks down. My friend's just like, you know, like, what, what do you want me to do? I caught a shark today. And he, he looks around for his superiors. No, no one's around. And he zips up the bag. He's like, okay, you guys, you can go right through. And we, we get up there, but it smelled so bad. It's like a dead shark in a duffel bag. And so we get to our seats, and we're enjoying the show. Everyone's laughing. But every couple of minutes, someone's like, man, what is that smell? And my friend's like, don't, don't you say anything, you know. And He's a complicated friend. Friendships can be complicated. Relationships can be complicated. I mean, there's some people in here tonight and you are very clear about your relationship status, all right? Some people in here, it's, it's definitely married. Others, it's definitely not married, okay? For some, it is, uh, it, it's, it's single. Where are the single people at tonight? Just give me a wave, all right? Look around, look around for a moment, it's okay. Uh, and, and there are other people in here and for you, it's like, it's just, it's complicated. I got a friend who started dating this girl, and he was known for, like, overcommitting, like, like, way too soon. And we're like, bro, just take it easy. Go slow. Like, you've been dating for six weeks. Like, don't buy a ring. Like, just, just relax. And he was a pretty successful business guy. And on the seventh week of dating this girl, he buys her a brand new car. We're like, bro, like, what? we told you to take it slow. I'm like, did she freak out? Did she leave? Did she break up with you? Did she take the car and drive across country? Like, he's like, no, man, but you don't understand. Like, I was, I was driving her home like three, four nights a week, and she lives like an hour away from me. And so I was losing like two hours sleep a night. And so business is going well. I just bought her a car, so now she can drive herself. Some of you are like, that's, that's not complicated at all. That's genius right there. Um, it worked out well for him, though. Like, they got married, okay? Uh, they got three kids now. Um, it's, it's, it's going well. Marriage. Marriage is it's complicated. I, I had no idea this year we're celebrating 11 years. My wife and I, her name is Leona Catherine Kimes. Thank you. Um, I, I had no idea on, on, on your wedding night when you choose what side of the bed you sleep on, guys, okay? Just throwing out there, choose wisely. Because that's it for life. I remember the next night I tried sleeping on the other side. My wife's like, what are you doing? That's, that's my side. You, you picked your side. I'm like, I didn't know. Like, that was forever, you know. Like, you got to warn me about this stuff. But that, that's it. And I, I didn't realize, you know, it was, it was coming up to holidays. And I'm like, you know, babe, I think, you know, Christmas, you know, we'll spend it with my family. Um, turns out she wanted to spend Christmas with her family. Like, go figure, you know? And so when I, when I just suggested um, that we would spend Christmas with my family and see her family after Christmas, like, she gave me that look. You know, you know that look? Like, like, there's nothing complicated about that look, right? Like, that look says everything. That look says if you, if you value your life, you will work with me here, right? So I'm like, oh, sure, babe, cool, no worries. Like, let's, let's have Christmas with your family. In fact, I don't even think my family celebrates Christmas anymore. So we'll just, whatever you want to do, just, just don't hurt me. Like, 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 relationships are complicated because life is complicated. And I think we're all complicated to a degree because our, our culture is so complicated. Like, like, there is so much happening in our culture today. There is so much unrest and uncertainty, so many different views and values, ideas and philosophies. And, and if you're a Christian in here tonight, which, which is a lot of us, 
but not all of us. And I love that about the 508. It doesn't matter what you believe. Like you are welcome here. You are family here. But if you're a Christian in here tonight, it's so easy for us to bring our complicated thought patterns and, and mindsets into our relationship with Jesus where all of a sudden following Jesus becomes complicated. And trusting God becomes complicated. And, and giving becomes complicated. And, and serving becomes complicated. And, and being kind to people becomes complicated. But, but what if following Jesus was never meant to be complicated? You see, our relationship with Jesus doesn't have to be complicated at all. But often it is the most complicated relationship we have. Because most Christians know the Bible better than they live the Bible. And I know that it hurts just a little bit, but it's true. Like, like so many of us are, are educated well beyond our level of obedience to, to God's word. And we, we, we pick and choose what parts of the Bible we want to follow. Like, yeah, that, that works for me now. That's good. Actually, that's not going to work with the job that I'm in. And yeah, I'm kind of seeing this girl right now. So yeah, I'm going to forget about that passage. And I'm just going to... And we develop this like, like feelings-based faith like, like, like come on Josh don't be so narrow minded alright it's 2019 alright like, like if it feels good do it like, like your life is your life your truth is, is your truth and come on you really believe that, that Jesus is who he says he is yeah I, I, I believe that Oh, you really believe the Bible? You believe that it is alive and powerful sharper than a double edged sword yes, yes I, I believe that and what about church? You believe that we need to be planted in a local church? Yes, I, I believe that. I don't know if you realize this, Josh, but like I, I don't need to go to church to be a Christian. Oh, I'm, I'm well aware of that this evening. In fact, I don't need to go to church to hear a sermon. Like, like I've got my phone. Like I, I, I listen to the greatest sermons the greatest preachers all the time I didn't even have to get out of bed I've, I've got all these different preachers like I, I don't need to go to church to listen to a sermon that, that that's true I'm not trying to argue with you and just I don't need to go to church to worship like I've got Apple music I, I pay my my monthly membership $9.99 like I've got I've got all that the Hillsong albums Bethel Elevation Passion Carrie Job like like 508 worship shout out September come on like like I've got them all and, and when it's when it's my, my my phone like when I worship at home like I can do my own set list and I listen to the songs that I want to listen to and I have a little bit of this and, and a little bit of that and it's great and it works for me I bet it does some of the times I've felt closest to God have been at home when I'm by myself just listening to some worship. I'm not trying to argue with you, but, but what happens when, when you get sick? Like what happens when you really go through something? Like what happens when that friend betrays you? What, what happens when that relationship breaks up? What happens when, when you lose your job? What happens when you just need someone to encourage you? When you need someone to pray with you and stand with you? Like, like go and ask your, your, your Apple Music for help. All right, like, like go and ask Spotify to, to pray for you, okay? Like, like go and ask YouTube to pray for you. No, it's not gonna work. Like you and I, we, we need each other. And we need the local church. That, that's why I love the local church. I don't know where I'd be without the local church. It says in Hebrews 10.25, don't give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encourage one another. Proverbs 18.1, those who isolate themselves rage against wisdom. Psalm 92.13, those planted in the house will flourish in life. Ephesians 1.23, the church, you see, is not peripheral to the world. The world is peripheral to the church. The church is Christ's body in which he speaks and acts, by which he fills everything with his presence. You see, without church, Christianity is more complicated. Without church, relationships are more complicated. Without church, life is more complicated. But yeah, come on, Josh, like, like, take your pastor hat off for a moment. Like, like you really believe that, that Jesus is who he says he is? I, I really do. And, and not only that, like, I believe Jesus will do what he says he will do. 
verse 35, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry and whoever believes in me will never thirst. Whoever comes to me will, will never go hungry. Like, like, I believe that. Whoever comes to me, Jesus says, will never go hungry. But here's the thing, we, we've got to come to him. Like, like we've got to go to Jesus. Like, like we've got to seek Jesus first. It says in Matthew 6, 33, to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And, and all these things will be added unto you. We've we got to seek Jesus first. And so, so my question to us tonight is, is, what are we seeking first? Who are we seeking first? Like, like is Jesus your go-to or, or something else? Because that's where so many of us complicate it. We, we equate fulfillment and satisfaction with, with what we do. And, and it's never enough. And so we, we do more. And, and, we, and we do more. And we, we find ourselves like trying to do more of this and, and more of that. More, more working. More, more striving. More, more praying. More, more trying to make things happen. More, more, more. But it satisfies less and less and less. Hoping that if we do more, we will become more. Trying to earn fulfillment. Trying to work for satisfaction. But it does not work. You see, we equate satisfaction with what we work so hard to achieve and accomplish. But satisfaction is found in what Jesus already achieved and already accomplished on that cross. Come on, anyone thankful for Jesus tonight? Anyone thankful for what he already achieved on the cross for us? He conquered the power of sin and death once and for all. Made a way for you and I not to just know about him, but to know him. To, to be forgiven, to be set free, to have a future secure in him. Let's not complicate it. Let's, let's keep it simple. Charles Spurgeon, a great theologian, once said this. God be thanked for the simplicity of the gospel. The longer I live, the more I bless God that we have not received a classical gospel or a mathematical gospel or a metaphysical gospel. It's not a gospel confined to scholars and men of genius, but a poor man's gospel. For that is the kind of gospel which we can live upon and die upon. It is to us not the luxury of refinement, but the staple food of life. Jesus in the flesh made manifest becomes our soul's bread. Jesus bleeding on the cross, a substitute for sinners, is our soul's drink. You know, when Jesus says, I am the bread of life, he's saying, I, I want you to receive me. I, I want you to digest me. I want you to, to lean into me. I want you to, to recline into me. I want you to trust me. Jesus was saying it. it's not about doing more. It's about believing more in me. And that word believe in the Greek means to have complete trust and, and reliance in. To, to have confidence in. To, to have faith in. Don't, don't overthink it. Don't, don't complicate it. No, just, just trust me. Just come to me, Jesus says. You'll, you'll never hunger or thirst again. That, that's, that's how we mature. That, that's how we, we keep growing. That, that, that's where we find our strength. That's where we find that, that inner peace when we have no reason to have inner peace. That, that, that's how we live with courage. That's, that's how we experience comfort. Like we've got to go to Jesus first. Those who come to me will never go hungry. Jesus is who he says he is. And he will do what he says he'll do. That, that's easy for Jesus because Jesus is God. It's, it's not so easy for you and I. <laughs> Isn't it annoying when like you don't follow through on something and someone reminds you of it? It's like super irritating, right? It's like, I'm sorry, I'm not perfect. Don't judge my journey. <laughs> we, we have something in my household called uh, cinnamon roll Saturdays, all right? Cinnamon roll Saturdays. Every Saturday morning, uh, I, I put some cinnamon rolls in the oven and my, my five-year-old daughter, she absolutely loves this. Uh, a, a little while ago, middle of January, I forgot about cinnamon roll Saturday. My five-year-old did not. And so wake up. She's like, Daddy, it's cinnamon roll Saturday. I'm like, baby, I'm sorry, I forgot. Can we do cinnamon roll Sunday? And she's like, but cinnamon roll Sunday is not cinnamon roll Saturday. I'm like, you, you got me there, you know, like, but it's like minus 150 degrees outside. It's raining. Like, you really want me to go out? And she's like, yes. And so I had to go out 
kind of put on everything that I owned, you know, trekked through like a blizzard. It wasn't a blizzard, but it's cold. I'm from Australia. I'm not used to this. Uh, I'm thankful that, that, that we don't serve a God that forgets about cinnamon roll Saturday, all right? Like, like, like God has the cinnamon rolls covered, all right? And, and here's a better, like they're calorie free. You can eat as many as you want. You, you, you see, hear, hear me tonight, 508. You don't have to remind God to be patient with you because he's patient with you. You don't have to remind God to be gracious. He's gracious. You don't have to remind God to be faithful to his word because we serve a God that is faithful to his word. Jeremiah 1.12, he watches over his word to perform it. Isaiah 55.11, his word does not return to him void. 2 Corinthians 1.20, for all the promises of God, a yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Philippians 1 6, for he who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it. And Hebrews 13, verse 8, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Come on, anyone thankful that we serve a faithful God? If he was faithful yesterday, oh, you can bank on God being faithful today and faithful tomorrow and faithful the day after that. And the day after that, we serve a God who is faithful to his word. We, we can trust him. We, we can go to him. I don't want to complicate my faith anymore. I don't want to be a complicated Christian because there's too many complicated Christians. Do you know that one of the most attractive qualities in life is just being uncomplicated? You want more friends? Be uncomplicated. You want a better relationship? Be uncomplicated. You, you, you want more opportunity? Be uncomplicated. You want more influence? Be uncomplicated. I, I read an interesting book earlier this year by a Canadian, uh, I, I guess, a, a professor. Uh, it was titled 12 Rules for Life. And it was interesting. And what I want to do in the next 13 minutes and 25 seconds is give you 12 rules for an uncomplicated life, all right? Okay, it's going to help some people out tonight. This is super practical. If you like taking notes, I've got like 12 points for you right now. So I'm going to race through these really quickly. Uh, some of these um, are going to like hit you tonight. Some of them are like, oh, yeah, that doesn't really like, like, like relate to me. Like I've got that. That's cool. At some point in my life, like I've experienced like every single one of these 12. So here we go. If you're taking notes, here's the first one. 12 rules to an uncomplicated life. Stop reading between the lines all the time. Stop reading between the lines all the time. Like, like, like I know he said this, but like, like what does he really mean? Like, like she texted me that, but then like, like I, I, what was she thinking? You know, because I saw the bubbles come up. I know she was writing something, but then she deleted it. Like if you were trying to get in someone else's mind all the time, can I tell you, you're going to lose your own mind. Just, just don't do it. Don't, don't, don't do it. Stop reading between the lines all the time. Number two, give people the benefit of the doubt. I don't know why in our culture so easily we just assume the worst all the time. Like, like let's change that. Let's start assuming the best in people. Like, like that's probably not what they said. That, that's probably not what they think. Like, that, that's probably not what, what, what no, that, that's probably not, no, that's probably not right. Like, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. They probably don't think that. They, they probably didn't say that. And if they did, well, here's number three. <laughs> Toughen up on the inside, okay? Twelve rules for an uncomplicated life. Toughen up on the inside. Don't wait to be wounded. We are so easily offended. So easily offended. Can, can I encourage you tonight? Please, please just, just toughen up on the inside. Thick skin, soft heart, can't lose. Like, like just, just toughen up. Like, obviously, like, we're human. We're going to get offended from time to time. But, like, at least make someone work for it. You know what I mean? Like, it, like if something is, like, really going to get under your skin, if something's really going to offend you, like, like, let them, like, make them work. Make them earn your offense. I, I want to toughen up on the inside. Number four. Initiate community instead of waiting for community to be initiated. Okay, that one there. Like, like initiate community instead of waiting around for community to be initiated. If I didn't initiate community, I would be a very lonely person. Man, they haven't. No one's texted me. Who, who have you texted? No one, no one said hi to me. Who have you said hi to? 
No one's invited me out. Like, who have you invited out? Like, I want to initiate community instead of waiting for community to be initiated. Yeah. Number five, here we go. Quit over-spiritualizing your season. 12 rules for an uncomplicated life. Quit over-spiritualizing your season. I don't know if you know anybody who's like always playing the God card. Like God said this. God said that. God, to God told me to go here. God told me to eat at Chick-fil-A. God, God, God told me to take that job. God told me to break up from that job. God told me to date you. God told me I'm going to marry you. God told me that we can't be together. Like, like really? Did God tell you all of that? Because you must have the most intimate relationship with God because He speaks to you more than anyone else on the face of the planet. That's amazing. Like, like how do you argue with that? God said. It's like, okay, well, it doesn't matter what I say because God said. Like, like, let's not over-spiritualize our season or that person who always plays the devil card. Like, you know, the devil made me do it. <laughs> Devil's been chasing me around this week. Devil's been all up in my DMs. Like devil's just, devil, devil, devil's just, it's just the devil, devil, devil. It's like, I, I don't think so. Like the devil is not omnipresent like God is omnipresent. And, I, and I'm sure you're going through some stuff and I'm sure there's some challenges, but I don't think the devil is sitting on the end of your bed waiting for you to make a bad decision. No, no, don't over-spiritualize your season. Don't, don't take yourself too seriously. Learn to laugh with yourself. Learn to enjoy the journey. Don't over-spiritualize it. Number six, hang around uncomplicated people. You become more like the people you hang around. If you're always hanging out with complicated people, you're going to become more complicated. And all of us, we need complicated people in our lives, right? Like we don't want to live in this little bubble. And maybe you are that complicated friend. Like that's all right. We're all on a journey, but... You got to make sure that you've got some uncomplicated people in your life. It's just refreshing to be around people who are uncomplicated. People that you can just be yourself around. You don't have to impress them. You don't have to entertain. You don't know. I just want to be around some uncomplicated people. Number seven, apologize more often. There we go. Uncomplicated life. Apologize more often. Don't be so defensive. Swallow your pride. Just say sorry. Don't always wait for the other person to say sorry first. Like, just, just say sorry. Just apologize more often. It will uncomplicate your life. Number eight, take the great advice you give others. I, I got a few friends. I've got a few friends, and they give great advice. Like, they seem to always know what to say. Like, they, I'm like, man, I wish I thought of that. I wish I said, the only problem is they don't take their own advice. And they come up and they're, they're talking and their life's falling apart. And I'm like, bro, if you would just follow your own advice. Like you had the same conversation with someone last week. I heard your advice. It was brilliant. If you could just do what you tell everyone else to do, like your life is going to be uncomplicated. Take the great advice you give others. Number nine, here we go. Maybe the team can, can join me as we start to close this out. Stop comparing your behind the scenes to someone's highlight reel, also known as Instagram. Stop, stop comparing. Stop comparing your life to someone else's. It's, it's not worth it. Comparison, it's not worth it. Comparison will cripple your calling. That's what comparison will do. Comparison will kill your confidence. That's what comparison will do. Don't, don't compare your behind the scenes to someone else's highlight reel. Just, just live your life. Just be faithful with who God's calling you to be. Don't, don't compare. It's not worth it. Number 10, encourage yourself more than you critique yourself. Encourage yourself more than you critique yourself. Some of us in here tonight, you, you are so self-critical. You are so hard on yourself. You, you get so down on yourself. You're, you're so self-analytical and it, and it just kind of eats away at your soul. You, you need to learn to encourage yourself more than you critique yourself. You, you're probably doing better than you think you are. You've got to be nicer to yourself. You've got to speak life to your own soul. Encourage yourself more than you critique yourself. Number 11, ask for help when you need help. If you want to live an uncomplicated life, ask for help when you need help. When you hide how you're feeling, when, 
when you're too proud to, to be honest with someone, you, you only perpetuate the pain on the inside and it doesn't get any better. It gets a whole lot worse. Don't, don't acclimate to your dysfunction. Get help. Talk to someone. Get better. Do something about the way that you're feeling. Don't, don't just settle. Don't, don't just be content with, with where you're at. No, no, ask for help. Don't wait for someone to read your mind. Don't wait for someone to have some prophetic word and come in and read your mail. No, you got to be honest with someone. That there's nothing spiritual about suffering in silence. No, you got to ask for help when you need help. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength. Hey, I'm going through something, man. Would you, would you pray with me? Hey, I've got this coming up and I'm really anxious about it. Man, would, would, you, would, you, would you pray for me this week? Would you, would you think about, man, can you, can you follow up next week? Can you ask me how I'm doing? Because it's, it's been really tough you got to ask for help when you need help. And number 12, don't walk away just because life gets complicated. Don't walk away just because life gets complicated because life will. Life will get complicated. Seasons will come. Seasons will go. Challenges will come. Challenges will go. And I think too many people just walk away when life gets complicated. Too many amazing people just walk away when when challenges come, when they turn their back on opportunity, they, they turn their back on potential, they, they turn their back on incredible relationships, they, they turn their back on the possibility of what, of what could be. I mean, we see this at the end of, of John chapter 6. Jesus has had this conversation with his disciples and, and the crowd, and there's hundreds of people that have been following Jesus. Everywhere he went, the, the crowds gathered, the crowds followed. When Jesus explains what it means to follow him, at the end of their talk, a whole bunch of them, they, they didn't get it. it. It seemed too confusing. They, they didn't understand it. And so they, they turned their back and they, they walk away from Jesus. I think it would have broken Jesus' heart. He loved the crowd. He, he had a plan and a purpose for every single one of those people who were following him. But because it got too complicated, they, they turned their back and they, they walked away from everything he was offering and Jesus was there and he sees everyone walking and he turns to the 12. He's like, hey, are you guys going to go to? You're going to leave? You're going to walk like everybody else is walking? And I love Peter's response. Simple Peter, uncomplicated Peter, average Peter, ordinary Peter, just, just figuring life out, not perfect by any means. But Peter's like, like Lord, to whom shall we go? Leave? Like, 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 why would we leave? Like, you are who you say you are. I mean, you're the one who walks on water. You're the one who feeds the 5,000 with a couple loaves and, and a couple fish. You're, you're the one who opens blind eyes and deaf ears. You're, you're the one who, who heals the sick. You're the one who, who raises the dead. You are who you say you are. And you'll do what you say you'll do. Like, to whom shall we go? Like, we've come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. You have the words of eternal life. To whom shall we go? You're the one who, who satisfies the thirst of my soul. You're the one who satisfies the hunger of my heart. He satisfies a discouraged heart. He, he satisfies a, a painful heart. He satisfies a lonely heart. He satisfies an exhausted heart. He satisfies a broken heart. He satisfies a hurting heart. And as followers of Jesus, we've got to set our hearts exclusively on the one who is the exclusive satisfaction of the human heart, Jesus. I'll close with this. A few months back, I was at the gym and I was just thinking about how easily I, I complicate things in my own thinking, my own understanding, and how at times I can just complicate my life. And I, I was just kind of having this moment where I'm like, God, I just don't want to be, I don't want to be complicated. I don't want to have a complicated faith. I don't want to be a complicated Christian. I, I don't want to be a, a complicated dad. I don't want to be a complicated husband. I don't want to be a complicated friend, a, a complicated pastor, a complicated leader. God, I, I don't want to complicate things. And kind of just having this moment and started feeling kind of down and discouraged. And I'm like, God, I just, 
I want to, I want to know you. Like, I, I want you to help me to uncomplicate my life. Like, I, I want to love people the way you love people. I want to, I want to see people the way you see people. I want to love this city the way you love this city. Like, I want to learn to trust you. Like, with all my heart, like, like your word says. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with, with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He'll direct your path. And I, I kind of had this moment where I'm like, God, like I need to trust you more. I want to trust you that, that you've got me. I want to trust you that you're looking after my family. I, I want to trust that, that you know what you're doing. I, I want to trust you. And I'm, I'm kind of having this moment where I'm thanking God and I'm praying and I'm realizing how, how much I need to continue to hold on and trust Him. And how often I try and just take control of things and that just complicates things even more. And, kind of start getting emotional when I'm at the gym working out it's not like tearing up at the gym which is never a good idea people start looking at me like who's this guy crying like that must have had a crazy breakup you know and I'm like like I gotta get out of here <laughs> so I like I like leave like got the towel I'm just kind of covering up I go into the locker room I completely forgot where I, I put my stuff which locker and so for the next 30 minutes I had to get one of the the managers to help me open up every single locker in this locker room <laughs> to find my stuff. And I think God was just saying, hey, Josh, you're, you're always going to be a little bit complicated, but I love you and I've got you and I'm with you and I'm for you. And it's the same for you and I. You see, my prayer is that no matter what happens, no, no matter what life throws your way, no matter what season you find yourself in, that you would make a decision. I'm not going to complicate things. God, I'm going to trust you. Even if everyone else walks away, I'm not going to walk away. I pray that we always go to Jesus first. Those who come to me will never go hungry. Those who believe in me will never thirst. I pray we trust that Jesus is who he says he is. And he will do what he says he's going to do. I don't just want to know about him. I don't just want to know church. I don't just want to know religion. I don't just want to know a, a good feeling that I get at the 508 on a Friday night or a good feeling I get at church. No, I want to know Jesus. Like, I want to know His will. I, I want to know His ways. I want to know His peace. I want to know His love. Like, I don't want Jesus to just be an addition to my life, an add-on to my life, something I include when it works for me. No, I want Jesus to be the foundation of my life. I want him to be everything. To whom shall we go? No, he has the words of eternal life. He is who he says he is. And he will do what he says he'll do. He's faithful to his word. Every head bowed, every eye closed in this place tonight. I wonder whether you know this God. Not do you know about him. Not do you know religion. Not are you a good person. Not, not do you come to the 508 every time it's on. No, no do you know Jesus? Are you walking with Him? Do, do you have your own relationship with Him? Because if you don't, it would be my incredible honor to pray a prayer with you tonight and help you to open up your life, open up your heart to God. The Bible says that we've all sinned, we've all fallen short, and the wages of sin is death. That's what we deserve. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Jesus came and He died and He rose again so that you and I could be forgiven for everything we've ever done wrong so that we could be set free on the inside in a moment like this with a future so secure in Him. So what I'm gonna do on the count of three, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask if that's you, if you need to make your peace with God tonight, need to begin this relationship with Jesus, then when I get to three with no one looking around, I'd ask for you just to raise your hand just high enough and long enough for me to see it. Maybe you're watching this online I'm speaking to you too. If you need to make your peace with God tonight, I want you to lift your hand on three. One, Jesus loves you. He died and rose again so you could have life too. The Bible says that right now is a time for salvation. Don't wait another moment. This is your moment. Three, if that's you, would you raise your hand? Say, yeah, pray for me. I want to know this Jesus the way you're talking about. It's awesome. Hands going up all over this place. Maybe at one point you, you made a decision like this, but you just feel so distant on the inside, so disconnected from Him, so disconnected from His plan and purpose. And tonight you're saying, Jesus, I need to come back. 
I need to recommit. I need a fresh start. If that's you, would you join all these hands? And I'll pray for you right where you're at tonight. It's amazing. He sees you. He loves you. The past is the past. This is a brand new start. Brand new chapter of your life. The old is gone. The new is here. It doesn't have to be complicated. No, Jesus is asking us just to trust Him. To, to lean into Him. To walk with Him. To open up our hearts to Him. You can put your hands down. 508, can we stand to our feet? And as we stand, come on, can we put our hands together? Can we thank God for a whole bunch of people making the greatest decision that you'll ever make? It's amazing. You know, we're going to pray this prayer. We're all going to pray it as one family tonight. And as soon as we get done praying, we're going to go into a moment of worship. And, you know, I would just encourage you, if there's an area in your life right now, and you're like, God, it's just complicated. I really believe that, that God is here. The Bible says where any two or three are gathered together in His name, there He is in their midst. And as we worship, I, I want you to just kind of give that up to God. God, this is complicated. God, help me to make sense of this. Help me to trust you with this. Help me to give you control of this. Help me to release this to you. God, help me to, to trust you. And I believe that God's going to do just that. He's going to help uncomplicate our lives in a moment. The Holy Spirit is here. So we're going to pray this prayer, we're going to worship, and we're going to allow God to move in this place. Would you repeat this after me? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your son Jesus. I know he died and rose again for me. And right now I turn from my own way, and I turn to you. Thank you that you love me, that you forgive me. By your grace I'm saved. By your power set free. Today's a new day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, can we put our hands together?